Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this episode of the Health Essentials Podcast. My name is John Horton, and I'm your host. Today, we're talking to a podiatrist, Nicole Nicolosi, about how shoes affect your feet. Odds are you've got a closet filled with all sorts of shoes, ranging from dress shoes to gym shoes to flip-flops to to boots. Um, Here's the question, though. Is your choice of footwear causing you aches and pains? That's what Dr. Nicolosi is here to chat about, while also offering us some tips to keep you and your feet feeling great. Thanks so much for being with us here, Dr. Nicolosi. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Great, great. Hey, let's start by having you tell us a little bit about your work here at Cleveland Clinic um, and, and how podiatry serves as a gateway to address so many different health issues. Well, thanks. So I've been a, a staff podiatrist here at the clinic since 2015 and um, the podiatrist as well as surgeon. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon as well. And so I do see both ends of things, the clinical aspect as well as when patients need to go that extra extra step into surgery. Okay. And so, um, podiatry is a gateway to other health concerns being, um, proper alignment from the ground up helps out your back, you know, can affect different conditions. Like if you can't, if you can't be active, then you can't, um, you can't exercise, you can't maintain your cardiovascular health. So, um, having, good foot health in general is important for your overall well-being. Well, definitely, definitely. If your feet aren't doing well, you're not, uh, you, you've got some issues. So, uh, which, which we'll talk about. Um, so now let's move on to our main topic, which I guess is, is shoes and in, in, in your feet. And let's kind of get started with a real basic question. Uh, how important is it to wear so, a supportive pair of shoes uh, that fits properly? So very important. So abnormal shoe fit can result in foot irritation that could result in callus, which in the diabetic population can result in an ulceration and lead them down the path of amputation. In a non-diabetic, improper shoe gear can also lead to structural deformities such as toe contractures and um, other foot pathology, which can cause chronic pain. Wow. Well, that it's definitely chronic pain is something I think we all we all want to avoid. Um, uh, so clearly, I mean, the wrong pair of shoes uh, can make your feet miserable. So, um, what are some of the, you had mentioned like just aches and pains? I mean, what are some of the like foot injuries that you could have? A real you know specific sort of stuff. So one condition in particular is plantar fasciitis, and this is a condition which can result from overuse from a tight ligament on the bottom of your foot, which supports your arch called the plantar fascia. And when your foot arch is not adequately supported and your arch collapses, okay, and this ligament is tight, it causes tearing essentially or ripping of this ligament. And this results in inflammation and the pain that can result can be debilitating. So it's very important in general to wear good arch supports, good foot supports. Yeah, I'd imagine if you have, I, I, I know I've talked to people, I, I run and I know I've talked to people who have plantar fasciitis and it is, you're not just plowing through that. No. <laughs> um, so aside from your feet and, and the issues like plantar fasciitis that you can have, um, can bad shoes cause like aches, pains and injuries in other areas of your body? So absolutely. Um, So we were talking about alignment. If your foot alignment is off, that affects your knees and then in turn affects your hips and then your back. So having a good alignment from the ground up is very important. Having your arch supported to prevent your knees from turning inward to avoid your hips, you know. So uh, orthotic or a shoe inlay that fits into your shoe to correct that alignment will in turn affect the rest of your body and prevent pathology higher up. Wow. Yeah. I think this is one of those things like you think of shoes and your feet and everything and, and you just, you think of them as so isolated, like they're just, they're down there. And, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it sounds like if something's not right, like if you get one little thing off there, there's kind of a cascading effect all the way up and down your body where it can cause problems. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so when you're buying shoes then, I mean, in general, um, what should you be looking for to avoid having those sort of issues? 
So a good quality shoe for me has several good components. Um, the shoe has to be decently rigid. And a good test I tell patients for this is if you can take your shoe and bend it clear in half, okay, this is not a good shoe for your foot. Um, so the structural support at, with the somewhat of a rigid shoe, not to say it's a completely hard board or stiff pole that you're walking on, but something that offers you some structural stability. Um, also, a shoe with a flexible type of material on the top, so especially in the area where your toes are. This will allow for any high pressure areas to develop on the toes. Let's say your toes have a slight curve to them and there's not too much fat cushion on the top of your toes, so any hard leather, that's going to be a really high pressure source for the toes rubbing. So a flexible or a soft type of material on the top of the shoe in that toe box area. And lastly, the insole. So if you, the insole is completely flat, doesn't have any cushion to it, you know, you don't have any arch support. And so fashion flats are example of this where they ha are completely flat on the inside and don't have that arch support. Okay. All right. Those are all great tips. And I think we're going to get into this a little more later when we talk about real specific shoes. Um, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about shoe sizing. Now I, I've worn a size 12 for, for as long as I can remember. I've got big, I've got big clod hopper feet. My wife gets tired of tripping over my shoes in the back hall. Um, should, should I assume that I'm always going to wear that size or, I mean, should I expect my feet to grow or, or shrink over time? Good question. So yes, our ligaments and tendons that support our arch can become worn or degenerative. And as a result, that there is a lack of support to the arch. And just from visually, if your arch is like this and you don't have that support, the foot lengthens as a result of your arch collapse. So yes, your foot length or your shoe size can thereby change. Uh, what about width? I mean, can you can your feet get get wider over time too? Yes. So, um, the, in pregnancy, uh, there's a hormone called relaxin, and this ligament is more normally meant to you know stretch out the ligaments in your pelvis and widen the cervix. But when you're pregnant, it just affects you body wide. And so the hormone also <laughs> relaxes the ligaments in your feet. And that includes those that support your arch, but also the width. And so the ligaments that hold the bones together width-wise are also relaxed. Uh, and so a female's width as well as length of their arch um, can decrease and result in a lengthened foot or in a wider foot as a result. All right. This is going to sound like a silly question too, but I mean, would weight gain just even contribute to your foot being, I mean, wider or narrower? Yes, absolutely. So it's this the same kind of respect if our ligaments aren't doing what they're supposed to and everything is stretched, then everything widens as a result. Okay. All right. All right. Now let's do a little shoe shopping 101. Um, you know, take advantage of all your knowledge here and, and get a little more specific about different types of shoes and kind of the pros and cons of each when it comes to uh, your feet. Um, so let's start since it's, uh, I mean, it's been warm here lately. Uh, let's talk about flip flops. Um, and I know those have evolved from just wearing them at the beach to wearing them everywhere you go. Um, is, it, is that good for your feet or are we causing problems? So flats and flip-flops kind of fall in the same category of a very unsupported issue. Again, if you could take your flip-flop and move it every which way, way or possible, then that is not very supportive of your foot. Um, for the most part, athletic shoes are engineered to have that structural support. And so they are the best things for your feet. But any flip-flop, um, that doesn't have an arch support will allow for your toes to kind of compensate for that lack of support and kind of grip the ground as a result. So I don't know if you've noticed, you know, wearing flip flops, your toes kind of curl. And this is a compensation that can result in hammer toe deformities to develop over time. Ooh. All right. So those 99 cent fl flip flops, probably not the best form of footwear, huh? Chuck them in the garbage. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, let's, let's change seasons now. And uh, we were talking like beach shoes. Uh, let's talk winter. Um, are there concerns about all those, uh, those sheepskin boots, the kind of those Uggs and bear paws and all those things uh, that seem to be on every set of feet that you see in line at the coffee shop? So if you look inside those shoes and notice it's completely flat on the inside without any structural support. So this structural support being an arch support is important for the proper alignment of our foot like we were talking about. And that results in altered mechanics. Um, so I give the analogy of a car. If your car is out of alignment, you get more wear down in certain tires. Okay. And same thing with your foot. If your foot is out of alignment, you get more wear down in certain joints. Okay. So in terms of the foot, this is abnormal motion results in wear and tear of your cartilage resulting in arthritis long-term. So, um, adequate support, it prevents long-term pathology. Okay. And I know one of the things that those sort of uh, boots are known for too, is they're, uh, I mean, so, so fuzzy on the inside and obviously very <laughs> comfortable, uh, but I, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that is probably not the best thing as far as uh, bacteria growth and all that too. That's absolutely. So bacteria likes to grow in that damp environment. And so you'll, you'll often smell more if as a result, because bacteria will let you know when they're there by an odor. So okay. <laughs> well, that's another thing to watch out for. Um, so um, since we're already in the boot section, um, let's look at a couple other ones. Uh, what about uh, cowboy boots, uh, that traditional uh, Western gear? So very often cowboy boots will have this kind of pointed and to the toe box. And this encroaches and narrows the foot in the toe area. And by compressing the structures in that forefoot, you then press on or impinge different structures, one being the nerves, okay? And long-term impingement of the nerves in the forefoot can result in inflammation or scarring or thickening of these nerves something called an aroma and this will present to you as numbness and tingling and burning and unfortunately nerve healing takes a very long time to recover from um, so it sounds like we do a lot of stuff to our feet that is not very nice uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the with our choice of shoes um so uh, with boots too, I mean, does, does heel height matter? Uh, I know you see some boots and the heels are just, they're huge. And then some are kind of flat. How does that all fit into things and what does that do? So by wearing a type of shoe with a large heel or a, a high heel over time, this can result in shortening of your Achilles tendon, a contracture of, or tightening of your Achilles tendon over time. As a result of having a tight Achilles tendon, now you have, when you don't wear those shoes with a heel height, now you're walking on flat ground, now your Achilles tendon is short, and now it's pulling, pulling as a result of this tightness on where the, it attaches. And this pulling causes tearing on a micro level, it results in inflammation, predisposing you to Achilles tendonitis. Um, other pathology is that your Achilles tendon is a a very strong tendon and such a strong deforming force that it's stronger than the other tendons in your body and your foot in particular that raises your arch, your posterior tibial tendon. And so it, because of this overpowering effect of the Achilles tendon, it can lower your arch over time or flatten your arch as a result of the altered mechanics or overpowering of one tendon over another. So it can predispose you to a number of conditions to being, you know, Achilles tendonitis and flat foot pathology. And I'd imagine that's like goes into what we were talking about before with problems going up and down your body, that if your Achilles tendons off, that can cause problems through um, like your, your IT band up into your hips, even in your back too. Absolutely. For sure. Okay. Um, and so with boots, then if you just go with a flat, uh, more of a flat boot, is that then the way to go? Or if you go that way, do you have to make sure then that you just have arch support? And um, I mean, what should you look for? So a flat shoe, you know, it would be more supportive if it did have an insert in it or an orthotic. Um, 
So the orthotic, what it does is it offers our foot more structural stability. As we walk, our heel strikes the ground. It, then the pressure is offloaded to the outside of our foot. Our outside of our foot is what is called a mobile adapter. It accommodates uneven terrain, okay? And so this load then transfers to the forefoot, so across the bottom of the forefoot, and then to the big toe for propulsion going forward. And so if you have um, abnormal mechanics from the point your heel strikes the ground, so if there's excessive motion in any one of these components, it then transfers down the line, okay? And so the tendons, for example, on the outside of your foot uh, in the midfoot area called the perineal tendons accommodate this excessive terrain or instability to the foot. And as a result of this lack of stability, they're being overworked. They're constantly trying to um, stabilize the foot as a result. And so they can be overworked as a result, resulting in tendonitis. Wow. You know, from everything you're saying, it sounds like your feet are just, they're, they're really an engineering marvel with the way everything, uh, everything comes together. So um, let, let's move on now into the dressier side of the shoe store and talk about high heels and stilettos. And, and I think some of this we've already covered, you said about with heel height and everything, but um, are, are high heels, I mean, are, are they good for your feet or are they going to cause some issues if you're in them all the time? <laughs> so being a female, I wish this wasn't true, but yes, stilettos, high heels, they put all the, the weight of your body to the forefoot. And so just, you know, thinking of that, so your, your weight, all your weight going to the ball, walking on the tippy toes, it's, it's putting pressure there where it should be more evenly distributed across the entire bottom of your foot. And so this une uneven distribution of pressure kind of predisposes you to inflammation of these joints called capsulitis or metatarsalgia, um, which can take a while for this to calm, calm down and resolve. What about, I know with heels too, you often see um, where they get, I mean, so pointy. Um, I can't even imagine trying to stick my piggies in some of the shoes that I've seen. Um, what, what is that going to do with those high heels that you see go to that really extreme point? So that na very, very narrow toe box, you know, not only will it predispose you to that neuroma condition that we discussed previously, but also kind of exacerbate any bunion or hammer toe deformities. These are first and foremost genetic predisposed, but, you know, these type of shoes, which kind of bring your toes in that direction, can cause this to worsen and develop these deformities over time. Okay. All right. Now, what about, we, we talked about high heels, just kind of regular old dress shoes, um, the boring dress shoes, like what I've got. Um, what should you look for in those? A lot of men's shoes do have that narrow point, same as females. And so you do need to be cautious of shoes that also will narrow your forefoot. And then dress shoes for a male do have that flat or unsupportive arch as well. So having a little bit of an arch support in those dress shoes will make that dress shoe more supportive. Okay, great, great. Um, now let's get a little sporty. We're going to exercise a little bit because that's part of being healthy too. Um, if you're doing a sports or, or a fitness activity, what should you be looking for in a shoe? So I really defer to the arch type here. So if you have a higher arch versus a lower arch, that will determine, at least for me, the type of athletic shoe I will tend towards. So um, I love Asics in this respect. I don't know if we're allowed to say shoe brands here. But, um, Asics has a line of shoe geared towards higher arch foot types and then the lower arch foot types. And it really stops that instability or... Um, lack of control of your foot motion that will progress forward in your foot when you run or, or walk. Um, so I myself wear um, the flat foot line of A6 and it really prevents my foot from collapsing in. And the same goes for that higher arch foot line, which would prevent your foot from turning out. Okay. And I guess the best thing you should do, like to even figure out what you need there, most um, a, a good shoe store or running shoe store will be able to kind of help guide you there as far as what you're going to need. 
Absolutely, for sure. And um, there is a lot of good shoe stores out there. All right. Now, a lot of you've talked a lot about um, kind of having the support and the arch support and all that. I know there's also an entire movement sort of away from that, the minimalist shoes. And, and it's probably most uh, most obvious in those little, uh, the, the five-toed shoes. They look like uh, you're going to put gloves on your feet. Um, are, are those uh, worth trying? I mean, do they offer any sort of benefit? So there's controversy on this. So this minimalist type of shoe um, are good in certain respects and negative in others. Okay. And so why it is the new trend is that it is for this very experienced runner who wants to increase their performance, get them running how their body is naturally meant to do this with their, you know, natural mechanics as, as a result of wearing kind of uh, very minimal on their feet, you know, almost running in their socks as, as God intended. The purpose of these shoes is meant to reduce stress injuries that would uh, come from wearing more of a structural or a restricted shoe. Um, but at the controversy exists in the fact that because of this restriction, um, in, in, in lack of support, you're then predisposing the foot into other you know, mechanical conditions. In particular, stress fractures is very common in this minimalist type of shoe and Achilles tendon pathology as a result of not having a little bit of a, a lift or support to the Achilles tendon when you're running. So personally, I'm in the more of the camp of the support. Uh, um, I think that this minimalist type of shoe is more for kind of the experienced runner um, that really wants to take it to the next level. Okay. All right. Great. Um, now let's get to maybe the most boring shoe of all. Um, if you are working and you're on your feet all day, um, it, what should you, is a must have for you as far as with a shoe? Um, so work shoes um, may have certain aesthetic requirements that, you know, you need to look a certain way being in a professional environment. And so the restrictions with that being said, it's very important that the, the work shoe or the shoe that you wear at work be very supportive of your feet. And be, that's because we're wearing our work shoes the majority of our work week. You know, we, we are wearing them more so than our shoes that we wear, you know, on the weekends or in the after hours. And so these shoes are, are very important in order to support your feet. Um, I myself wear our dance goes. They have a built-in arch support to them. Um, they also have that structural rigidity that I was talking about. Um, first and foremost, the athletic shoes should be an uh, automatic go-to because of their engineering. But Vionic actually is a very good brand of shoe that makes um, a dress shoe um, that is also very supportive of your foot. Okay. All right. And this is always a problem when you go shoe shopping. I mean, you'll look at a shoe and go, this looks incredible. I love this. And then you put it on and it doesn't feel good. Um, style or comfort, which way should you go? <laughs> comfort, you know, your, your body's telling you it's painful for a reason. And so it's going to rub in the shoe store. It's going to rub even worse at the end of the night and your, your, your feet are not going to be liking you at that point. Um, so I would always go comfort over, over style, but you know, you know, females, the, you do have to have these exceptions to the rule and, you know, not to say to, to always wear something, um, that is, you know, <laughs> comfortable and not aesthetically pleasing, but, you know, let it be the exception and not the rule to you, what you daily wear. Diabetics, though, do need to be more strict in terms of that comfort. They cannot wear anything that will rub on their foot because, like, again, they, they are predisposed to ulcerations and amputations as a result. All right. So, so sometimes you're just going to have to put, if that pair doesn't feel right, just put it back and know you'll find a cute pair of that, uh, that, that does feel good. Be optimistic. Be optimistic. <laughs> All right. One last thing. And, and before we kind of leave the whole notion of shoes, what about just absolutely going barefoot? And, and we touched on this a little bit with the, the running and, and what you might want there, but just padding around your house or outside or anything like that. I mean, if you're barefoot, are, are there 
issues that you're causing for your feet or extra stress you're putting on it that you're just not thinking of? I tell most of my patients to wear shoes indoors as well as outdoors. Have an indoor pair of shoe, have an outdoor pair of shoe. We talked about the structural support that it comes with wearing a shoe and the orthotic. Diabetics especially, you cannot go barefoot. Walking barefoot with something called neuropathy that occurs with diabetes is where you don't feel as you should. And so walking barefoot, you can get something stuck in your foot, not realize it, end up with an infection that then you can't fight off, and end up with an amputation as a result. And I see it all the time, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, it's something to be something to think about as you're making your choices and, and deciding whether to even wear shoes at all. So um, now you had touched on like if you make the bad choice with your shoes and your foot, your feet are killing you at the end of the night. Um, what are some things you can do? I mean, I know there's some TikTok trends out there that talk about using a numbing spray, um, lidocaine uh, to ease the pain. Um, is that a good idea? So I think, uh, you know, when you're sitting and you want to ease the pain, having a lidocaine or a topical anesthetic cream is, is good. Um, I wouldn't recommend maybe using that same cream with activity. So you that would then lead you to potentially developing uh, rubbing when you don't feel it and kind of causing worse problems where you should be feeling pain and you don't. So, you know, having these topical pain relieving creams like uh, lidocaine, Voltaren is another one, uh, which aim to kind of temporarily relieve that pain. Yeah, I think that's great. Soaking your foot Epsom salts uh, for 10 to 15 minutes, as long as the temperature of the, the water isn't too hot, also kind of relieves any muscle soreness or aches that your feet might be experiencing as well. Okay. So to do it afterward, it might not, it sounds like it would be a, a decent thing to do. Um, doing it ahead of time, Maybe not the best thing because you want to know if you're having issues. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, if you have other issues, say if you have uh, bunions or hammer toes, um, are there at-home treatments that people can try to kind of to make their feet feel a little better? So there is something you can purchase when your toe is in a flexible state. So Hammer toes come in different forms. There is a flexible state and a rigid state. Flexible meaning you can take that contracture and unbend it, okay? So it's still flexible. You can decontract that toe, okay? Rigid being, you know, you can't unbend that toe anymore. It's stuck in that rigid position. And so unfortunately, once you're in that rigid position, it's more just kind of padding or comforting that area of increased prominence with um, uh, over-the-counter supplies at the drugstore, but also that sh soft shoe mesh or uh, toe box cover like we talked about. But what you can purchase when you're in that flexible stage is something called a yoga toe, okay? And so what this yoga toe does is essentially stretches out the tightness to that toe. And so the toe mechanics, what's causing that toe to contract is an overpowering or over tightening of the intrinsics versus the extrinsics of your, of your tendons in your toe. And so by stretching out what's tight will allow for that toe to eventually get back into a normal position. So you no longer have that tight or contracted or curled toe any longer. So yoga toes is something that I advocate. Um, what about with bunions? Um, I know that's something I'm starting to see a little bump out on the side. I believe it's a, it's a gift uh, handed down from my grandmother. Um, and I know there's, there's, I've looked online and there's little miracle worker things you can find that kind of like go up against it and bring your big toe over. I mean, are those, do those do anything or is it just a, um, you know, I just waste 20 bucks. Unfortunately, you just wasted 20 bucks. So, oh, <laughs> <it happens. laughs> so here, just looking at, you know, your foot, when what a bunion is, is when the bone in the actual foot goes outward. And so as a result of this meta first metatarsal swinging in, your big toe swings out. And so these devices that kind of strap on the big toe to aim to bring it in this direction, unfortunately, don't do a thing 
for the actual driving force behind the bunion, which is the bone just behind it. So unfortunately, nothing that you can strap on your, your big toe that's going to correct that bunion other than surgery. Well, if my uh, purchase helped somebody else avoid that purchase, I suppose it's a good thing. So I'll look at it that way. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> We, we've covered a lot of ground here today, uh, Dr. Nicolosi. Um, is there anything else, uh, is there anything we haven't discussed that's important for people to know or understand about shoes and their feet? I think that the proper measurement of your foot is so important. And so please go to your local shoe store and have your foot measured on something called a Brannock device. You know, I'm sure you've seen that in, as a child growing up, there's a metal kind of devices that will measure the width as well as the length of your foot. And so what we want to look for is one to two centimeters. So about a thumb's width uh, from the longest point of your toe, edge of your edge of your toe to the shoe. Okay. And so you can, you can incorrectly go up on a shoe size thinking that, oh, this doesn't fit. I'm just going to go up on the size of your shoe. And that may not be correct. You may need to go in the, in the width to adequately fit your foot. And so having your foot measured is important for foot fit in your shoes as well as foot health in general. Well, that's good to know with the thumb up there because I know whenever I went to go get shoes when I was a kid, my mom tested it all the time. And it was always about a thumb width is what she was looking for. So mom always knows. Mom knows. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dr. Nicolosi, thank you so much for being with us here today and uh, talking with us on this really important topic. Thanks for having me. If you have questions about your feet, uh, talk to your doctor or call 216-444-4998 for an appointment at Cleveland Clinic. Uh, you can also find more information on foot health online at clevelandclinic.org. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today.